Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer before the video begins. I'm going to be talking about my life in scholarship and in academics and, you know, the things that I study are, you know, maybe, I guess, offensive to some people, um, specifically as it relates to people's personal beliefs. And, you know, you just have to keep in mind that I approach all of this from, you know, as much a scientific and an academic perspective as possible, and none of it is meant to offend anybody. This video is just to help you guys get to know me and what I do for, I guess, a living right now um, a little bit more. All right, hope you enjoy. Hey guys, Pope Sano here, back with a very different video today. And, you know, this video isn't going to be for everybody, but ultimately, this is something that, you know, I've been wanting to do. Um, I've been doing YouTube now for basically two months, and you know, we're at about 1,200 subscribers, which has been, you know, absolutely fantastic. The support has truly been amazing, and I'm really looking forward to just continuing. But, you know, I guess now that I feel like I have a bit of an audience, even though this channel is obviously pretty small still, but, you know, it's like, man, 1,200 people actually want to see this content and be a part of this community. It's pretty cool. Um... So I guess I just wanted to make a video just chatting with you guys and being like, hey, this is my, this is who I am. Like, so I guess maybe, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to title this video. Maybe who, who is Pope Paisano? Um, but really, I just want to talk to you guys about who I am, what makes me me. But it's going to be kind of focused around like my work, um, sp specifically my, I guess the main thing that I do when I'm away from YouTube, when I'm away from League. Um, you know, my studies and my work in, in the scholarly realm. Um, some of you will know a bit more than others, but, you know, I think like, I, while I want this channel and, it, and this channel will always be about educational League content, um, with, you know, a jungle twist to it, I would say. Overall, like, I... I want this channel to be about connecting people and connecting ideas and I guess just trying to be better people. Not only better at League, but like, you know, I think League of Legends actually teaches life skills if you can handle it the right way. And so I guess I just want this channel to be a bit more helpful in that sense too. And more than just a video game. Now, this might mean that I make a second channel and upload these kinds of conversation style videos um obviously in this one you're going to be watching me play a game but yeah so anyway i don't want to like belabor the the intro but that gives you an idea of kind of like what what i want to do here um you know so this might be a series where i just kind of talk about things that are important to me and you guys can get to know me a little bit better and i hope to engage with some of you in the comment section and um, this is going to be totally non-scripted, by the way. Like, it's just me talking to my audience, getting to know you guys better, getting to having you guys get to know me, get to know me better. Uh, yeah, you can tell it's unscripted because I'm already like stumbling over my words here. Um, yeah, and maybe just share like my motivation for making League of Legends content, but also like the things that are important to me. Like, my world is very much an academic, intellectual style world, and. That's not going to be for everybody, but I hope that even if that's not your thing, that you can still listen and, and enjoy um, and just learn more about, you know, the, the voice that is behind this YouTube channel. Um, maybe a 10K I'll do a face reveal. So, yeah. And I, I well, I guess, and on that note, you know, <laughs> if you are listening and you're not subscribed, um, I would really appreciate it if you did consider subscribing or dropping a like. And if you like this type of, uh, you know, this type of content, then please let me know in the comment section as well. Um, so, yeah, who, who is Pope Pei? Well, obviously I have a lifetime of things behind me as do all of us. And like, I'm not a special guy to be honest, but I, I'm someone that I really like ideas. I really like to think, I really like to push myself intellectually. Um, and I hope to kind of create a community that likes that too. But in terms of like who I am, really first and foremost, I am a, I'm a graduate student. Uh, 
I do scholarship. I, I'm a researcher. Um, I'm a TA. I've helped to teach many courses now at the uh, university level. Um, and I'm really close to the end of my master's degree, actually. Right now I'm compiling my PhD applications, which has, it's a crazy process. Like for those of you that know what that looks like, it's a really crazy process. And you're really trying to push yourself in every way possible to be the best uh, doctoral candidate that uh, you can be. So um, if any of you are listening and you're a grad student, let, let me know, because you probably know, you know, you know the grind, you know the life. But, uh, you know, I've also done a lot of like private type uh, acad academic type stuff in the private sector, um, speaking to various groups, uh, doing online teaching. Um, and so my, my work is in the field of religious studies. And specifically, I study uh, what you could say my specialization is, is that I do, um, I, I kind of look at the ancient languages of uh, the Christian religion specifically. Um, some of you, you know, may be familiar with like Latin and whatnot. Uh, specifically, I look at Koine Greek and I look at, um, I have done some, you know, learning in, in Hebrew as well, but Hebrew is not my my specialization Greek is definitely my jam and uh, um, I guess what I what I focus on in a way to explain this further is like many old texts in in uh, the Christian religion specifically I mean others as well but specifically Christianity uh, they are written in languages that are no longer spoken today now, of course, Greek is a modern language, but there's a few ancient variants of Greek, you could say. So there's like the Greek of Homer and, um, you know, the, the, his, his great works, um, works you've probably heard like the Iliad or the Odyssey, or you've heard these names like Plato and Aristotle, Alexander the Great. Um, you know, the, the, it's the Greek of those people and those great works of literature that I study. So it's not really, it's actually not that close to modern Greek. Um, and I've been involved in helping to teach courses like Introduction to the Bible, in which we uh, aim to help people in a university setting, you know, see something like the Bible as ancient literature, because that's what it is, right? Ultimately, that's what it is. It's ancient literature is written a very, very long time ago. And that means it has its own context and its own language. And it was written at a certain historical period and a certain literary tools were used. And so if you want to understand it, you need to be able to do that type of work. Um, now, I also just want to say that everything I talk about is going to be from a secular point of view. I am not talking about any of these things from any religious perspective. Um, there are some people out there that will disagree with me and things that I might say or things that I might, you know, talk about on here uh, because they have, let's say, religious or non-religious beliefs that lead them in certain ways that don't really line up with the science and don't really line up with uh, this field of study. And so I'm not here to argue about anything, actually. That's <laughs> really not my, uh, not my intent, but rather this is just the field that I work in. And so I wanna share about my experience and the things that I enjoy. You know, I'm really passionate about history, for example. Um, History is one of the reasons why I kind of was led in this way and why I wanted to do this. I think it's really important because the more you understand the past, the better we'll understand the future, right? And that same idea has been kind of um, transmitted over time in, in different ways. Like, you know, the, the phrase or the saying where if you don't know the past, you're kind of doomed to repeat it, like this idea. Um, and I, I believe that's true, but in this sense, I mean it in a bit of a different way, just in, in the sense that if we want to understand what is happening today and why and the very long and complex history of the way people think and believe and live their lives, not only in the West where, where I live, um, but all over the world, you know, then, then we have to understand the past. And that often has to do with things like religious belief and and 
uh, you know, political development and, and that type of thing. So uh, if that type of thing sounds interesting to you, then I hope you tag along with me um, because this is what I study. You know, um, I don't want to bring up, I'm not going to bring up like politics and stuff like that. Uh, all, all I will say is like looking at the news today with what is happening in Ukraine, what is happening in between Israel and Palestine, um, it is very clear that the world is a dangerous place and there are competing ideas, com competing beliefs. People uh, remember the past differently than one another. People believe that because of the way things were, that means they ought to be a certain way today, so on and so forth. And that's where really the work of history comes in. The work of studying things like political thought or studying things like theology and religious studies like I do because it helps inform and and gives us a more nuanced understanding of maybe why things are happening the way they are today um, and again I don't say that in any religious way whatsoever I just mean that you know for example understanding the understanding the really complex relationship between Jews and Muslims and even how Christians fit into that uh, it helps us understand, you know, why there is certain conflict today or why people don't get along or why people have certain claims on land, you know, so on and so forth, right? So that's the whole idea. Um, you know, and, and just a bit of a disclaimer, like, some of this I might may end up sharing some personal details about myself um, and why I do what I do and why I study what I study. You know, and, and there's no reason why I should offend anybody. I think I'm going to be fairly innocuous. It's impossible for me to share about myself or answer some of your questions without uh, potentially offending some people, I guess. Um, but just know that's never my intent. I'm, And again, just to say for the hundredth time, I'm not here to take any stand really whatsoever. Simply just to share about myself and my passions and and again, why I study what I study, why I wanted to become a scholar. So there's kind of two questions here that I want to address, I guess, two questions from my Discord. Um, the first is just that, uh, and this has actually been asked a lot. The first is, uh, why, why did you get into the religious studies field? And I guess I cheated a little bit and I shared like, my thoughts on history and humanities and social social sciences a, a bit earlier and why they're important to study but I can maybe address this a bit further like um, I it's not just history that I think is important but I, I think like I think it's important to be able to see beyond your own horizons you know in in the West today, I can only speak to the West in many ways because that's where I live and that's where I grew up. And in the West, I feel like we are, while the world is continually being globalized in the sense that we're connected more so today with people anywhere on earth than has ever been in human history, we're also being siloed into our own demographics, our own tribes more and more, right? It's Ultimately, the internet promotes tribalism in which you have your, your tribe, you have your squad, you have your thing that you enjoy and you have your things that you don't enjoy. And, you know, we see this with like Reddit, you know, like the subreddits, you, you, you go on there. Sure, you're on a website with like millions of people, but you're constantly in the same bubble, the same conversation that's happening. A league can be the same way, you know, we see this even between like the roles in, in league. Like, the junglers are supposed to think a certain way about the laners and vice versa. You know, relating this back to my study, I think, like, the study of politics, the study of, of religion, the study of history, the study of art, you know, these things actually are, are meant to expose you to other ideas that are also viable ideas. You know, there, you'll, you'll come across ideas that are not viable, right? And there are numerous political beliefs that are simply not viable. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of hinting at like some of the more extreme beliefs here. Um, you know, the idea is that as you study, though, like something like politics or something like religion more, you've come across so many ideas 
and so many different versions of the same idea and so many ways that people thought in the past how reformation happened how um i guess how new ideas came into the scene how some ideas were scrutinized so on and so forth and you're supposed to say wow i kind of understand now just how broad the spectrum is on how you can think about a certain topic you know uh and there's a lot of beauty in that as complex as it can, can kind of be there's a lot of beauty in that because um you start to understand people more you start to understand like it's not just about my tribe it's not just about me being correct and you being incorrect it has nothing to do with that at whatsoever actually what it's about is me doing my best to see beyond what i've been able to see before you know and and this this is really true when uh myself as you know someone in in i guess religious scholarship if you want to put it that way um or a religious academic study we i see students all the time you know uh some of the classes that i've been fortunate enough to help to teach um you know introduction to theology um courses on the bible as a piece of literature or even teach helping to teach like ancient greek you expose people to new things and you you actually get to watch them as students the gears turn and they see something that they thought they knew for so long in a totally different light and that changes their lives you know it's a, actually a really really powerful thing um you know and i guess for me that that's always been a part of what attracted me to something like this uh i talk to i talk to people all the time um about what i do right because you know you, you meet new people and that's one of the first things they ask well what do you do and i tell them well, i'm a grad student i do scholarship i help to teach um you know uh, when I was on a research team, that was obviously one of the big things too. Hey, I'm doing research, and they would ask, of course, oh, and what? And, and you would tell them, right? Uh, and particularly when you say, oh, well, I study like ancient languages. Well, people people find that quite quite interesting, <laughs> even if the work itself can be somewhat uh, tedious and boring at times. It kind of sounds very very glamorous. Maybe maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Um, you know. Anyway, um, and the thing is, is like. People will come into those conversations with a predetermined thing in mind about what they think about, say, religion as a topic, as a whole, right? Whether they like it, whether they dislike it, whether they're somewhere in between. Everyone has their kind of, like, preconceived notion. For some people, it's just they're apathetic. They just doesn't really matter to them, which is fine, too. Um... But when you share and you can actually show them like how complex an issue really is in a way that is intelligible to them without them having to do the, the study and the research and be a scholar, right? If you can explain these things in a really compelling manner that is like easy to understand, it's actually really, really cool. You kind of walk away from a conversation knowing that they actually hold a more nuanced view on the thing that you study every single day of your life like that's a really exciting thing and so in part that's why I, I even continue to do this I think that's super cool um, so yeah so then kind of the second question that I was asked what is the best part about what I do and what is the worst part about what I do well again I, I, I got ahead of myself a little bit guys and I think like the best part about what I do is probably what I was just talking about like the light bulb moments you could say where you help to see you help to show someone something that they have thought they knew or they knew at a cursory level for a very long time and you actually show hey there's actually a lot more nuance here than what you first thought people are actually really attracted to that type of thing um, which I, I think is really cool. I, I, and I try to do that with things that I don't know that much about, right? Like, I know a whole lot about a whole little. That's what being a scholar is. You know I, you know everything about, about very, very, very little, right? Um, and I like to think, I like to think that when I am in a situation where I don't know much about something, that 
being in a situation in other parts of my life where I study one topic so deeply, and I have now for a very long time, uh, that I have an open, more open mind, right? I'm more able to see nuance and things. At least that's in some sense, that's what university is supposed to teach you to do. At least that's what undergraduate studies is supposed to teach you to do. For those of you that have done undergraduate um, degrees or you're doing an undergraduate degree, in large part, it, it's there to teach you critical thinking skills, pattern recognition skills in some way, um, how to communicate ideas, how to argue ideas, how to defend ideas. Um, these are like really invaluable things that we're actually starting to lose a little bit in the West. Um, you know, degrees and uh, what is worthwhile, like these are often seen in a monetary way. It's like, oh, well, you know, STEM is more valuable than humanities because you can make more money. It's like, well, is that <laughs> to me anyway, it, it's like, is that really is that really what it's about? Um, you know, the way I think about it is like, I love STEM, by the way. I'm actually, a, I'm a big science lover. Um, but you can't have one without the other, you know? Like, you need to have science and STEM because in a way, that's what like, the way I think about it is this, right? Before I get too sidetracked. STEM gives you the picture of like what's going on in some way, right? Or at least it gives you the frame. Okay, it gives you the frame, you know what's inside the frame, you know what's outside of the frame. It may even give some kind of like, uh, some reference into what you're looking at, what picture you're looking at inside of the frame. Um, it may even give you a really clear picture of what you're looking at inside of the frame. But I think without the humanities, that picture will always be in black and white. You know, and I don't know if you've ever seen a picture in like black and white and then that, the picture's in color right beside it. But it's so easy not to realize what you're losing without the color. The color is what gives it the vitality, it's what gives it the life, it's what gives it the meaning, you know, and I think in some sense that, like, that is some of the coolest bit about what I get to do is I, I hopefully, you know, it's not just about, I'm helping people understand that, like, it's not just about religion and, like, what is right and what is wrong and who's, who's holy and who's not and, you know, that like, whatever that is. That's not what this is about at all. Rather, it's about understanding, like, Hum humans better why we are the way we are where we've come from what decisions were made in the past why you know what decisions are still made today based on the past that are you know maybe outdated or they don't have the full nuance and understanding you know it's about promoting education it's about promoting nuance that that's what this is about and, and i would say when i get to do that that's the best part about what i do um, a lot of it isn't that, by the way. A lot of it is I'm looking at a language that no one speaks anymore and I'm talking about the verbal aspect um, and, you know, what uh, what voice and what mood that verb is in, you know, so on and so forth, right? You, you, that might not even, it probably doesn't mean anything to you anyway, but that's the point. Um, anyway, what is the worst part about what I do? Well, this... <laughs> I need to say this very, very carefully because, again, my intent here is not to come across like I'm, like I even have a stance that I want to share with you uh, about, like, about religion or who's right and who's wrong. Like, again, this is totally secular POV. Um, but what I want to say is, the worst part about what I what I do, I am, I'm a grad student and. Uh, I guess you could say a baby scholar in the religious studies field. I'm a biblical scholar. That's what I do. Because th that's like my main focus. People generally won't like you. And the reason why I say that is like generally speaking the conservative, maybe like fundamentalist type of religious folks, they generally don't like us because part of what we do is we show the humanity of religious belief right so what i mean by that is when we talk about things like literary context or historical context of you know let's say like a bible story okay or in my world when, when i look at the ancient language of which those bible stories were originally written in and we are making determinations based off that 
about what that could mean or how to maybe even translate them better into uh, modern languages. People are really tied to what they grew up being told. And so when something new comes to light, when there's a new discovery, when there's a new consensus, uh, the kind of fundamentalist conservative types, you could say, they, they get very, they get worried, you know? And in some sense, I want to extend some grace to them because it can be daunting having your beliefs feel like they're being poked and, pr and prodded, you know, especially by people where you're like, oh, there's just these people that live in the university and they're just studying my religion and they're saying this and that about it. Uh, yeah, that can feel kind of daunting. So I want to extend some grace to them. But as well, <laughs> as well, on the other side of things, the kind of hardcore or like the atheist types, maybe you could say, generally don't like us either. Uh, and that that is because we show that these texts and these religions have a lot more complexity than meets the eye. Um, it is far too void of critical thinking to say like, well, something like the Bible, right? It's outdated and it's really old and it has these weird kind of like beliefs in them and these weird stories. And so we just need to throw it out and, and just move on and move past it. Um, I think that is too... That is too hasty in the sense that you will, um, you'll throw the baby out with the bathwater, I guess. You are missing too much of like the complexity and the nuance and the, in some ways, the seriously profound nature for why these stories are so important to the human species as they are, you know? Like there's a reason why this text is the most read in the world and has been for thousands of years. There's a reason why it is the most sold book, the most printed book in world history. Like, regardless of what you think about it, I think it's fair to say that we need to make sure we understand this thing and study this, this thing, its history, its literary context, its theological context, why people find it so compelling, why people find it so uh why it's been a part of human tradition for so long you know especially here in the west like again whether wh whatever your religious beliefs are we can't deny that like christian tradition is a massive reason why our society is the way it is today right um so we should probably understand like like <laughs> what their what their holy texts are why they why they are the way they are so yeah i guess like anyway that's a bit of an explanation of again like the best part the worst part about what i do and why i do it i hope that gives you a bit more context into again who who is pope paisano and um if you're interested more in like my work and what i do i would love to continue to make some of these just you know over some chill background gameplay Hopefully it's something you guys enjoy. Um, and if you do enjoy, like leave a like, leave a comment, you know, subscribe to the channel. I can see all those metrics. But anyway, again, let me know if you enjoyed, guys. I hope you enjoy getting to know Pope Sano a little bit more. And yeah, I'll be back with another one here, maybe in a week, maybe in two weeks. We'll see. All right. Hope you guys have a great day. Pope Pay out.